And uh, to create an analysis, you, cr you click on the plus button. And now, within each analysis, we can have one or more analysis steps. So this is a very simple analysis. We just have an input of matrix of a matrix or several matrices, and an output of a tree or several trees. Uh, but in some cases, you might have a multi-step analysis in which, for example, you start by finding a set of most parsimonious trees, and then in the second step, you create a consensus tree and so forth. We've added the possibility of entering multi-steps just to cover some of the diversity of the kinds of analysis pe analyses that people do. Fortunately, this is a simple analysis, so I'll just create an analysis step. See what that looks like. So here's my analysis. Here's my analysis step. So what do I want to call this analysis? Well, to edit any of the metadata, you click on the little pencil button. Uh, that also gives you a delete button. So if you wanted to abandon that analysis, you could do so. Let's take a look at the paper. The tree I'm uploading is this one down here, which is, it says it's a uh, maximum likelihood solution for Ethereum orders. So maybe that sounds like a good name for the analysis. I'll call it ML solution for Ethereum orders. Update that. So now I have a name. I also have an opportunity to store some notes that might be useful for the your readers in terms of replicating your analyses. That's not needed here. Uh, I can edit metadata associated with anal this analysis step. Uh, again, perhaps I'll just call it it's a max maximum likely solution. I'll just call it maybe an ML analysis. That would be simpler because there's probably multi oops. Um, the software used is PALP in this case. The algorithm is uh, maximum likelihood. And here, notice there's an opportunity to put some commands. Uh, if you happen to know uh, information about uh, various commands given to the program, such as the substitution models, that's where you could put it in. For example, if I and here's, here's an example, PALP block, in which the LSET command has parameters associated with the um, um, substitution model. And if I wanted to help the users out there understand how I produce the tree, it, it might be helpful to give them this information in the command block. But actually, in this particular case, I, I don't because I'm not the author of this paper, I don't actually know these details. So I'm not going to include that. I'll click Update. So now I've added in basic information, such as the software and the algorithm. I'll designate the input data. And the input is going to be matrices in this case. It's only one matrix. That makes it easy. The output data is going to be either a tree block or, or, or particular trees. Since I only have one tree in one tree block, I'll just select the tree block. And that attaches the particular tree there. You'll notice that just before I did this, the analysis step header was in red. That indicated that there was some sort of error in the analysis step. Uh, now that I've got both an input data set and an output data set, and the taxon labels match between them, there's no longer any error to report. If this stayed in red, that should warn you, you can hover over it to see what the problem is, but that should warn you that perhaps you're trying to match up the wrong trees with the wrong matrices. Only trees and matrices that agree on the set of tax that they have, taxon labels, only those should be mated by way of an analysis step. Okay, so that's done, and you'll notice that the yellow has disappeared for the trees and matrices here. Uh, the taxa are still in yellow, 
and that is true because it says that some tax have not been linked to an external taxonomy. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, we, we really ask that you take your labels, which could have misspellings in them, um, and match them against a big dictionary of taxon names in order to alert you to any misspelling mistakes, but also as a way of linking your data to external taxonomic identifiers such as the NCBI tax ID or the UBIO name bank ID. And the simplest way to do this is simply to click validate taxon labels. And our program goes through all this, all these taxon labels over here and checks whether they match anything in our database already. If they don't, then it goes off to UBIO and uses the UBIO name bank name recognition services to try and find the name there. In one case, a name wasn't recognized. Here we have Ovis, and it says Aritis. That's probably Aries. Uh, and, uh, and I'll look up in UBIO to see if I can find that to get the spelling just right. This means that the, spell, the spelling in the original data matrix was wrong. So, Ovis, Aries, oh, there it is. No, that's probably the wrong spelling. Aries, there we go. This is probably the right spelling. Okay, so I'm going to now edit this taxon label Back here. I'm going to paste in the correct spelling and click update. And if all goes well, the new taxon label spelling will again be matched against their database. And here it is down here. And it was found. So this tells you that in all cases the taxa were matched against either our existing records of taxa or UBIO's taxonomic services. Uh, it may well be that some of these, uh, some of your taxon labels will not be able to be found either in TreeBase or in UBIO. And that's okay, they'll just have to be left unmapped. All right. So now you'll notice that we, um, we seem to be ready to make this submission public because none of the warning signs, none of the yellow highlights are indicated. All of my data has been uploaded. There's one matrix, one tree, and I've created an analysis to link them. However, there is other metadata to be added. For example, in the trees, 